from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Ansible Fest 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. The ascendancy of massive clouds underscored the limits of human labor. People, they simply don't scale at the pace of today's technology. And this trend created an automation mandate for IT, which has been further accentuated by the pandemic. The world is witnessing the build out of a massively distributed system that comprises on-prem apps, public clouds, and edge computing. The challenge we face is how to go from managing things you can see and touch to cost effectively managing, securing, and scaling these vast systems. It requires an automation first mindset. Hello everyone, this is Dave Vellante and welcome back to Ansible Fest 2020. We have a great panel to wrap up this show. With me are three excellent guests and CUBE alums. Ashesh Badani is the Senior Vice President of Cloud Platforms at Red Hat. Ashesh, good to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, likewise, thanks for having me on again, Dave. Stephanie Cheris is Vice President and General Manager of the RHEL Business Unit and my sports buddy. Stephanie, <laughs> glad to see you back in the New England area. I knew you'd be back. <laughs> Yeah, good to see you, Dave. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, very welcome. And finally, Joe Fitzgerald, longtime CUBE alum, Vice President and General Manager of the Management Business Unit at Red Hat. Joe, good to see you. Hey, Dave, good to be here with you. Ashesh, I'm going to start with you. Can you, let's lay out the big picture for us. So how do you see this evolution to, to what we sometimes talk about as hybrid cloud, but, but really truly a hybrid cloud environment across these three platforms that I just talked about? Yeah, l let me start off by echoing something that you know most of your viewers have probably heard uh, in the past, right? They've always heard this notion about developers, 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 and you know mm -hmm. that still holds true. Uh, we aren't going away from that uh, anymore. Developers are the new king makers, but increasingly, as the scope and complexity of applications and services that are deployed in this heterogeneous environment increases. It's more and more about automation, automation, automation. Um, in the times we live in today, even you know before dealing with uh, the crises that that you know we have, just the sheer magnitude of requirements that are being placed on enterprises and expectations from customers require us to be more and more focused on automating tasks which humans just can't keep up with. So. You know, as we look forward, this this conversation here today, you know, what Ansible is doing, you know, is squarely aimed at dealing with this complexity that we all face. So, Stephanie, I wonder if you could talk about what it's going to take to to implement what I call this this true hybrid cloud, this you know, connection and and management of this environment. RHEL is obviously a key piece of that. That's just going to be your business unit, but but take us through your thoughts there. Yeah, so um, kind of building on what, what Ashesh said, when we look at this hybrid cloud world, right, which now hybrid is much more than it was considered five years ago. It used to be hybrid was on-prem versus off-prem. Now hybrid translates to many layers in the stack. It can be VMs hybrid with containers. It can be on-prem with off-prem and clearly with edge involved as well. Whenever you start to require the ability to bridge across these, it really takes, that's where we focus on having a platform that allows you to access sort of all of those and be able to deploy your applications in a simple way. Um, when I look at what customers require, it's all about speed of deploying applications, right? Build, deploy, and run your applications. It's about stability, which is clearly where we're focused on RHEL being able to provide that stability across multiple types of hybrid deployment models. And third is all about scale. It is absolutely all about scale. And that's across multiple ranges in hybrid, be it on-prem, off-prem, edge. Um, and that's where all of this automation comes in. So to me, it's really about where do you make those strategic decisions that allow you to choose, right, for the flexibility that you need and still be able to deploy applications with speed, have that stability, resiliency, and be able to scale. So Joe, let's talk about your swim lane. And it's weird to even use that term, right? Because as Stephanie just said, we're kind of breaking down all these silos and we're talking in, in terms of platform, but how do you see this evolving? And, and specifically, what's the contribution from a management perspective? Right, so Stephanie uh, and Ashesh talked about sort of speed, scale, scale and complexity, right? People are trying to deploy things faster or larger scale. No, by the way, keep everything highly available and secure. That's a challenge, right? And so, 
you know, interestingly enough, Red Hat, about five years ago, we recognized that automation was going to be a problem as, as people were moving into open hybrid clouds, which we've been working with our customers for years on. And so we acquired this small company called Ansible, which had some really early emerging technology, all open source, right, to do automation. And what we've done over the past five years is we've really amplified that automation and, and amplified the innovation in that community to be able to provide automation across a wide uh, array of domains that you need to automate, right? And to be able to plug that into all the different processes that people need in order to be able to go faster, but to track, manage, secure, uh, and govern these kind of environments. So we made this bet years ago, uh, and it's paying off for Red Hat in very, very big ways. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, when you guys bought Ansible, so it wasn't clear that it was going to be the clear leader. It is now. I mean, it's pulled ahead of Chef, Papa, you saw, you know, VMware bought, bought Salt. But, but I mean, Ansible very clearly has the, 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 based on our surveys, the greatest market momentum. Uh, we're going to talk about that. I know some of the other analysts have chimed in on this, but, but let me come back to this notion of, of, of on-prem and cloud and edge. And this is complicated. I mean, the edge, it's kind of its own island, isn't it? I mean, you got the IT and the OT schism. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how you see those worlds coming together, the cloud, the on-prem, the edge. Maybe Stephanie, you can, you can start. Yeah, I, th I think the magic, Dave, is going to happen when it's not its own island, right? As we start to see this world driven by data cause the spread of a data center to be really disaggregated and allow that compute to move out closer to the data, the magic happens when it doesn't feel like an island, right? That's the beauty and the promise of hybrid. So when you start to look at what, what can you provide that is consistent, that serves as a single language that you can talk to from on-prem, off-prem and edge, you know, it all comes down to, for us, having a platform that you can build once and deploy across all of those, but the, the real delicacy with Edge is there are some different deployment models. I think that comes into deployment space and we're clearly getting feedback from customers. We're working on some capabilities where Edge requires some different deployment models and the ways you update, et cetera. And thanks to all of you out there who are working with us upstream in order to deliver that. And I think the second place where it's unique is in this ability to manage and automate out at the Edge. But our goal is certainly at our platform levels, whether it be on RHEL, whether it be on OpenShift to provide that consistent platform that allows you that ease of deployment, then you got to manage and automate it. And that's where the whole Ansible and the ecosystem really plays in. You need that ecosystem. And that's always what I love about Ansible Fest is this, this community comes together and it's a vibrant community for sure. Well, I mean, Ashesh, you guys are, you know, you're betting big on this. And I often, you know, think of the cloud is just this one big cloud. You got the on-prem cloud, you got the public clouds, edge becomes just an extension of, of that cloud. Is, is that how you, you think about it? And what is it actually going to take to, to make that edge not an island? Yeah, great point, Dave. And that's exactly how we think about it. Um, we've always thought about our vision of the cloud as being a platform and abstraction that spans all the underlying infrastructure that a user can take advantage of. Some of it happens to reside you know, in a data center, you know, some in a private cloud uh, running off a data center, uh, more increasingly in the public cloud setting. And as Stephanie called out, we're also starting to see edge deployments come in. We're seeing you know, big build outs and work we're doing with Delco providers from a 5G perspective uh, that's helping drive that. We're seeing, if you will, IoT-like opportunities with let's say the automotive sector or some in the retail sector as well. Uh, and so this fabric, if you will, right, needs to span this entire set of deployment uh, that a customer will take advantage of. And, and Joe started touching on this a little bit, right? With this notion of the speed, scale, and complexity. So we see the, this, this platform needing to expand to all these footprints that customers are using. At the same time, the requirements that they have, even when they're going out the edge, is the same with regard to what they see in the data center and the public cloud. So putting all that together really is our sweet spot. That's our focus. And, and to the point you're making, Dave, that's where we're making a huge bet uh, across all of Red Hat. So I mentioned you know, some of our research and, and I do these breaking analysis segments every week. And, and recently I was digging into to cloud and specifically was interested in hybrid and multi. 
And you know, hybrid has been pretty, I think pretty well understood for a while. Multi, I think, was a lot of, you know, a lot of talk, but it's becoming real. And the data really shows that. It shows OpenShift and, and Ansible have momentum. I mentioned that before. Um, yeah, you know, obviously VMware is, is there, but but clearly Red Hat and is is well positioned, uh, specifically in multi-cloud and, and hybrid. Uh, and, and so, and I know some, some of the other analyst firms have picked up on this. Uh, what are you guys seeing in the market? Maybe Joe, you can chime in and Ashesh, you can maybe add some color. Yeah, so, you know, you know, there's a lot of fashion right around hybrid and multi-cloud today. So every vendor is jumping on with a hybrid, you know, multi-cloud story. And, you know, a lot of the vendor strategies are pick my solution and vertically use my stuff in the public cloud on-premise, maybe even at the edge, right? And you'll be fine. And, you know, obviously uh, customers don't like lock-in. They like to be able to take advantage of the best services, availability, security, different uh, things that are available in each of these different clouds, right? So there is a strong preference for hybrid and multi-cloud. Red Hat is sort of the Switzerland of hybrid and multi-cloud because we enable you to run your workloads across all these different substrates, whether it's in public clouds, multiple, right? Um, into the data center and physical, virtual, bare metal, um, out to the edge. An edge is not a single homogeneous, you know, set of hardware or even, um, you know, implementation. It varies a lot by vertical. So you have a lot of diversity, right? And so Red Hat is really good at helping provide the platforms like OpenShift and RHEL that are going to provide that consistency across those different environments but also in the case of Ansible to provide automation that's going to uh, match the physics of management and automation that are required across each of those different environments. Trust me, managing or automating something at the edge and with a very small footprint of some device across a constrained network is very, very different than managing things in a public cloud or in a data center. And that's where I think Red Hat is really focused and that's our sweet spot, helping people manage those environments. And yeah, actually, you guys have obviously quick. put a lot of effort there. If you could maybe comment. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Dave, I'll add just really quickly to, to what, what Joe said, he said it well. Um, but the, the thing I will add is the way for us to, to succeed here is to follow the user, follow the customer. Right? Instead of us just coming out with regard to what we believe the, the path to be, you know, we're really kind of working closely with the actual customers that we have. So, for example, recently we've been working with a large water utility in uh, Italy, uh, but they're thinking about, you know, the world that they live in and how can they go up and, uh, you know, have kiosks that uh, are spread throughout Italy, be able to provide reports with regard to the quality of the world that's available, uh, as well as other services to, to, to all their citizens. Uh, and it's really interesting use case for us to go up and pursue, because in some sense, you can ask yourself, well, is that public cloud? Are they going to take advantage of some of the services? Is that, you know, private cloud? Is that data center? Is that IoT? Is that edge? At a certain point in time, what you've got to think about is, well, we've got to provide an integrated end-to-end -end solution that spans all of these different environments. And so as long as I think we keep that focus, as long as we make sure our North Star is really what the user's trying to do, what's, what problem they're trying to solve, I, I think we'll come out just fine on the other side of this. So I'd, I'd love to get, all your thoughts, all three of you, on just what's going on in containers, generally Kubernetes specifically. I mean, everybody knows it's, it's hot space and the data, data shows that it's, it's, it is maturing, but it's amazing to me how much momentum it still has. I mean, it's, it's, it's like the new shiny toy, but it's everywhere. And, and so it's able to sort of maintain that, that velocity. Um, and it's really becoming the go-to cloud native development platform. So the question is, how is Red Hat you know, helping your customers, you know, connect OpenShift to the, the rest of their IT infrastructure platforms, their processes, the, the tools. Uh, I mean, who wants to start? Maybe I mean, I'd love to hear from, from all three of you. Ashesh, why don't, why don't you kick it off and then we'll just go left or right. So, uh, Dave, we've spoken to you and to folks on the Cube as well as other, uh, for many years on this. Uh, we've made a huge investment in uh, the Kubernetes market and been one of the earliest to do that. Uh, and we continue to believe in the promise that it delivers to users. Uh, this notion of being able to have an environment that customers can use regardless of the underlying choices that they make. Uh, you know, it's an extremely powerful one. It's rooted in open source, right? This is key to, to you know, what we do. 
increasingly, what we're working on is to ensure that one, if you make a commitment to a Kubernetes, and increasingly we see lots of customers around the world doing that, that we ensure that we're working closely, that our entire portfolio helps support that. So if you're going to make a choice with regard to uh, Kubernetes-based deployment, uh, we help support you running it yourself, wherever it is that you choose to, to, to run it. We help support you whether you choose to have us manage on your behalf, and then also make sure we're providing an entire portfolio of services, both within Red Hat, as well as from third parties, so that you have the most productive integrated experience possible. Okay, and Stephanie, love your point of view on this, and Joe, I'd love to understand how you're bridging, you know, kind of the Ansible and Kubernetes communities, but Stephanie, why don't you chime in first? Yeah, I'll, I'll quickly add to what Ashesh said and, and talked about well on, on really the, the promise and the value of containers, but from a, particularly from a RHEL perspective, we have taken all our capabilities and knowledge in the Linux space, and we have taken that to apply it to OpenShift, right? Because Kubernetes and containers is just another way to deploy Linux. So making sure that that underpinning is stable, secure, and resilient, and tied to an ecosystem, right? An ecosystem an ecosystem of various architectures, an ecosystem of um, ISVs and tooling, right? We've pulled that together in everything we've done in Linux for you know, over decades now at Red Hat. And we've put that into that customer experience around OpenShift to deploy containers. So um, we've really built, it has been a portfolio wide effort as, as Ashesh um, alluded to. And of course it, it passes over to Ansible as well with Joe's portfolio. Yeah, we talked about this up front, Joe, the, the communities are, are so crucial. Uh, so how are you bridging those Ansible and, and Kubernetes communities? What's your thought on that? Well, a quick note about those communities. So, you know, OpenShift is built on Kubernetes and a number of other projects. Kubernetes is number seven in the top 10 open source projects based on the number of mm -hmm. contributors. Right. Turns out Ansible is number nine, right? Um, so if you think about it, these are two incredibly uh, you know, robust communities, right? On the one hand, building the container platform in, in Kubernetes and then the other around uh, Ansible and automation. Um, it turns out that as the need for this digital acceleration and building these container-based applications comes along, there's a lot of other things that have to be done when you deploy container-based applications, whether it's infrastructure automation, right, to, to expand and manage and automate the infrastructure that you're running your container-based applications on, creating more clusters, uh, you know, configuring storage, network, uh, you know, counts, things like that, but also connecting to other systems in the environment that need to be, um, you know, integrated with around, you know, uh, you know, ITSM or systems of record, change management, inventory, cost, um, MDB, things like that. So what we've done is we've integrated Ansible, right, in, in, in a very powerful way with OpenShift through our advanced cluster management capability, which allows us to provide an easy way to instrument Ansible um, during critical points, whether it's you're deploying new clusters uh, out there or you're deploying a new version of an application or a new application for the first time, whether you're checking policy, right, to ensure that, you know, that the thing is secure, uh, that, you know, you can govern these environments, right, that you're, you're relying on. So we've really now tied together two sort of de facto standards, OpenShift built on Kubernetes and a number of other projects, and then Ansible, uh, where Red Hat has taken this innovation in the community and created these you know, certified content collections, platforms and capabilities that people can actually build and rely on and know that it's going to work. Ashesh, I mean, Red Hat has earned the right really to play in, in both the cloud native world and of course the traditional infrastructure world. Uh, but I'm interested in, in what you're seeing there, how you're bringing those two worlds together. Are they still you know, largely separate? Are you seeing Kind of traditional IT, I mean, you're certainly seeing them lean in to more and more cloud native, but, but what are you guys doing specifically to kind of bring those, those worlds together? Yeah, increasingly it's really hard to be able to separate out those worlds, right? So in the past we used to call it shadow IT. That really is no shadow IT anymore, right? This is IT. Uh, so we embrace that completely. You know, our take on that is to say, there are certain applications that are going to be appropriate for being run in a data center a certain way. There are certain other workloads that will find their way to be appropriate for the public cloud. We want to make sure we're meeting them across. But what we want to do is constantly introduce technologies to help support the choices customers make. What do I mean by that? Let me give a couple examples. Um, one is, you know, we can say, 
customers have VMs that are based out in uh, specific environments and they can only run as VMs. The, that, that code can't be containerized for a variety of reasons, right? You know, hard to re-architect that, don't have the funds, you know, have, you know, certain security and compliance reasons. Well, what if we could take those VMs and then have them be run in containers in a native fashion? Um, wouldn't that be extremely powerful value proposition to run containers and then VMs as containers sort of side by side with Kubernetes orchestrating them all? So that's a capability we call OpenShift virtualization. We've introduced that and made that generally available within our platform. Now, another one, which I think Joe is uh, starting to touch on a little bit here, uh, is both around this notion of uh, Ansible as well as advanced cluster management and say, uh, one, technologies like Ansible are familiar to uh, our customers. How about if we find ways uh, to introduce things like the operator framework to help support people's use of Ansible? Uh, and introduce technologies like advanced cluster management, which allows for us to say, well, regardless of where you run your clusters, whether you run your Kubernetes clusters on premise, you run them in the cloud, right? We can manage them in a consistent fashion and manage you know, health and policy uh, and compliance of applications across that entire estate. So Dave, your question is an extremely good one, right? But what we are trying to do is try to be able to say, you know, we are going to just span those two worlds and provide as many tools as possible to ensure that customers feel like, you know, the, the shift, if you will, or the move between traditional, you know, enterprise software application development and the more modern cloud native can be bridged as seamlessly as possible. Yeah, Joe, we heard a lot of this at, at Ansible Fest. So the ACM as a you know key component of, of your innovation and frankly, your, your competitive posture. A anything you would add to what Ashesh just shared? Well, I think that one of the things that Red Hat is really good at is we take management and automation as sort of an intrinsic part of what needs to go on. It's not an afterthought. You just don't go build something, go, oh, I need management, go out and you know, go get something, right? So we've been working on you know, sort of automation and management for, for many, many years, right? So it, we build it in concert with these platforms, right? And we understand the physics of these different environments. Um, so we're very focused on that from inception as opposed to an afterthought when people sort of paint themselves into a corner or have management challenges they can't deal with. There's a lot of analogs in our business in there. The management is a bolt-on and security is a bolt-on. It just, it just doesn't work that well and certainly doesn't scale. Stephanie, I want to come back to you and I want to come back to the edge. We, we hear a lot of people talking about extending their deployments to the edge uh, in the future. I mean, if you look at, at, at what what IBM's doing, they're essentially betting its business on RHEL and, 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 and OpenShift and betting that its customers are going to do the same as, as well as you. Maybe talk about you know, what you're doing to specifically extend RHEL to the edge. Yeah, Dave, so we've been we've been looking at this space consistent with our strategy as as Ashesh talked about, right? Our our goal is to make sure that it all looks and feels the same and provides one single Linux experience. We've been building on a number of those aspects for quite some time. Things like being able to deal with heterogeneous architectures as an example, um, being able to deal with you know, having ARM components and x86 components and power components and being able to leverage all of that from multiple vendors and being able to deploy. Those are things we've been focused on for a long time. And now when you move into the space of, an, of the edge, certainly we're seeing, you know, essentially data center level hardware move out to be disaggregated and dispersed as they move it closer to the, um, to the data and where that's coming in and where the analysis needs to be done. But some of those foundational things that we've been working on for years starts to pay off because the edge tends to be more heterogeneous all the way from an architecture level to an application level. So now we're seeing some, some ask, we've been working upstream in order to pull in some features that, are, that drive capabilities around specifically updating, deploying those updates, doing rollbacks and things like that. So we're focused on that. Um, but really it's about pulling together the capabilities of having multiple architectures, dealing with heterogeneous infrastructure out there at the edge, being able to reliably deploy it, even when, for example, we have customers who they deploy their hardware and they can't touch it for years. How do they make sure that that's out there in a stable environment that they can count on? And then, you know, adding in things like containerization. We talked about the magic of that, being able to deploy an application consistently and being able to deploy a single container out there to the edge. Um, 
we're thinking about it all the way from the architecture up to how the application gets deployed. And it's going to take the whole portfolio uh, to do that as you need to manage it, as you need to deploy containers. So uh, it, it's a focus across the company for how we, how we deal with that. And as we were talking about before, it's, it's, you know, it takes a village, you know, that bromide, but it does, yeah. right? it requires an ecosystem. And Joe, I mean, there's some real technical challenges in R&D that has to happen. I mean, you've got to be, you know, you're talking about cloud native in all three different clouds, uh, and, you know, other, not just the big three, but other clouds, and then bringing that to the edge. So there's some clear technical challenges, uh, but there's also some business challenges um, out there. So, you know, what are you seeing in that regard? You know, what are some of those things that, that you hope to solve by bridging that gap? Well, I think one of the things we're trying to do, and I'm focused on the management and automation side, is to provide a common set of management tooling and automation, right? And I think Ansible fits that quite well. So over the past five years, since Ansible has been part of Red Hat, we've expanded from, you know, they started off initially doing configuration management, right? Uh, we've expanded to include you know, network and storage and security, now edge. Um, at Ansible Fest, we demonstrated things like serverless uh, event-driven automation, right? Building on OpenShift serverless and Knative. Um, we're trying to expand these sort of the use cases for Ansible so that there's a simplicity, there's a tool reduction, right? Across all these environments, right? And you don't have to go deal with nine vendors and you know, 17 different tools to try to manage each element here. Uh, to be able to provide a common set. It reduces complexity, cost, um, and allows uh, skills to be able to be reused across these different areas. It's going to all be about digital acceleration, right, and reducing that complexity. And one last comment, one of the reasons we bought Ansible years ago is the architecture, it's agentless. Many of our competitors that you hear, the first thing they want to do is go deploy an agent somewhere. And that creates its own ongoing burden of, do I have the latest version of the agent? Is it secure? Does it fit on the device? As Stephanie mentioned, is there a version that fits on the architecture the device is running on? It starts getting really, really complicated. So Ansible is just simple, elegant, agentless. We've expanded the domains we can automate with it. And we've expanded sort of the modality. How can I call it? The user driven by an event as part of some lifecycle management, app deployment, Ansible plugs right in. Well, Joe, you can tell you're a management guy, right? As an agent, it's another thing that has to be managed. You just laundry list agent of stuff. So, <laughs> I want to I want to come back to this notion. Joe just touched on it. This digital transformation. You know, they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, COVID broke everything. Uh, and I got to say, I mean, all the talk about digital transformation over the last you know several years, yes, it was certainly happening. But there was also a lot of lip service going on. And now, if you're not digital, you're you're out of business. And so. You know, given everything that we've seen in the last, you know, whatever, 150, 200 days or so, um, what's the impact that you're seeing on customers' digital transformation initiatives? And, and, you know, what is Red Hat doing to respond? Maybe Ashesh, you could start and we can get feedback from the others. Yeah, Dave, it's, it's an unfortunate thing to say, right? But there's that meme going around with regard to who's responsible for digital transformation. Uh, and it's a little bit of, I guess, gallows humor to to call it call it COVID. But we're increasingly seeing um, that customers in the journey that they're on um, is one that they haven't really gotten off, even with this, if you will, change in environment that that's come about. Um, so the projects that you know we've seen in play, you know, are still underway. Uh, we've seen acceleration actually in in some places with regard to to making services more easily accessible. Um, anyone who's invested in hybrid cloud or public cloud is seeing you know huge value with regard to being able to consume you know uh, services remotely, uh, being able to do this on demand. Uh, and, and, and that's a that's a big part of the value proposition uh, you know that comes forward. Um, and increasingly, what we're trying to do is trying to say, you know, how can we engage and assist you in these times, right? So uh, our services team, for example, has transformed to be able to help customers remotely. Uh, our support team has, has gone off and uh, worked more and more with customers. Uh, for a company like Red Hat, that hasn't been a completely, if you will, difficult thing to do, mostly because we've been so used to working in a distributed fashion. Uh, working remotely with our with our customers, so uh, that's not a challenge in itself. But making sure customers understand that you know this is really a critical journey for them to go on, 
um, and how we can kind of help them, you know, uh, walk through that uh, has been good. And we're finding that that message really resonates, right? So both Stephanie and Joe talked a little bit about, you know, how essentially our entire portfolio is now built around, you know, ensuring that if you'd like to consume on demand, we can help support you. If you'd like to consume in a traditional fashion, we can help you. That amount of flexibility that we provide, you know, to customers is really coming to bear at this point in time. So maybe we could wrap with, uh, we haven't really, if you could, we haven't really dropped any customer names, Stephanie and Joe and Ashesh. I, I wonder if you have any, any, you know, stories you can share or, you know, customer examples that we could, we could close on that are, they're exciting to you this year. So I can start if that's okay. Please. Uh, so an area that I find super interesting from a customer perspective that we're increasingly seeing uh, more and more customers uh, go down is sheer interest in, if you will, kind of diversity of use cases that, that we're seeing, right? So uh, we see this, for example, in automotive, right? So whether it's, uh, <clears throat> a BMW or a Volkswagen. Uh, we see this now in healthcare with the HCA, uh, in we'll say a little bit more traditional uh, industries like energy with Exxon or Schlumberger, uh, around increasingly embrace of AI ML, right? So artificial machine learning, if you will, advanced analytics, uh, being much more proactive with regard to how they can take uh, data that's coming in ingested, be able to make sense of the patterns, and then be able to you know, have some action that has a real business impact. So this whole trend towards you know, say AI ML workloads that they can run you know, is extremely powerful. We work very closely with NVIDIA as well, and we're seeing a lot of interest, for example, in being able to run a Kubernetes-based platform, you know, support NVIDIA G GPUs for specific class workloads. Uh, there's a whole bunch of customers people in financial services uh, that you know, this is a rich area of interest. You know, we've seen uh, great use cases, uh, for example, around grid. You know, with the Deutsche Bank, uh, and so, you know, to me, I'm personally really excited. You know, to see kind of that embrace uh, that we see from our customers with regard to saying uh, there's a whole lot of uh, data that's out there. You know, how can we essentially use uh, all of these tools that we have in place? You know, we talk about containers, microservices, DevOps. You know, all, all of this. And then put it to bear to to really put uh, put to work and get get business value. Great, thank you for that, Ashesh. Uh, S Stephanie, Joe, Stephanie, anything you want to add yeah. or you know final Maybe thoughts? Just, yeah, just one thing to add, and and I think Ashesh talked through a, a whole number across industry verticals and, and customers. But I think the one thing that I've seen through COVID is that uh, it's if nothing else, it's taught us that change is change is the only constant. And I think. Um, you know, our whole vision of open hybrid cloud is how to enable customers to be flexible and do what they need to do when they need to do it, wherever they want to deploy, however they want to build or provide them some consistently consistency right across that as they make those changes. And I think as I've worked with customers here through since since the beginning of COVID, it's been amazing to me the diversity of, of how they've had to respond. Some have doubled down in the data center, some have doubled down on going public cloud. And to me, this is the this is the proof of the, the strategy that we're on, right? That open hybrid cloud is about delivering flexibility and boy, nothing's taught us the need for flexibility like COVID has recently. So, um, so I think there's a lot more to do. I think pulling together the platforms and the automation is what is going to enable the ability to do that in a simple fashion. So Joe, you, you get the final word. I mean, Ansible Fest 2020, it's, I mean, it's weird, right? Or, but that's the way these, these events are, all virtual. Hopefully, hopefully next year we got a shot at being face-to-face, -face, but bring us home, please. Yeah, I got to tell you, having you know, 20,000 or so of your uh, closest friends get together to talk about automation uh, for a couple of days is just amazing. That just shows you sort of the power of it. Um, you know, we have a lot of customers this week at Ansible Fest telling you their story. You know, CarMax and ExxonMobil, um, you know, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. I mean, there's a number across all different verticals globally, SEPSA uh, from Europe. I mean, just an incredibly uh, you know, diverse array of customers and use cases. Um, I would encourage people to look at some of the customer presentations that went on at Ansible Fest. Listen to the customer telling you what they're doing with Ansible, deploying their networks, deploying their apps, managing their infrastructure, container apps, traditional apps, connecting it. Um, moving faster, um, they have amazing stories. I encourage people to go look at them. 
Well, guys, thanks so much for helping us wrap up Ansible Fest 2020. It was really a great discussion. You guys have always been awesome CUBE guests. We really appreciate the partnership, and uh, so thank you. Thanks a lot, Dave, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having us. All right, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, and we'll see you next time.